And first at five, that bombshell affidavit, new evidence revealed in the Julia Nicewender murder. In these documents, the feds say circumstantial evidence points to just one man. Seven investigator Jonathan Carlson has been poring over these documents. And uh, Jonathan, it shows they narrowed the search, right? Yeah, you know, what a case, guys. Up until now, police have been vague as to why Jim Turnquist was their person of interest in this case. Now it's becoming clear why he is their prime suspect. Through the Freedom of Information Act, the seven investigators obtained this bombshell affidavit. In it, Ypsilanti Police Department homicide investigators detail how they came to the conclusion that this man, Jim Turnquist, is the sole person of interest in the murder of EMU student Julia Niswender. Turnquist is Niswender's stepfather. In fact, an FBI profiler told investigators Turnquist should be considered the number one suspect. Niswender was found face down in a tub in her off-campus apartment in December of 2012. The EMU student was just shy of her 24th birthday. One of the first family members on the scene, James Turnquist. Why, Julia? Why for any reason? Why? In an exclusive interview with Action News last October, Turnquist told me the killer was still at large, and he believed police were faltering. We don't talk to him. We don't like the way that... Uh... We don't like the way they're handling it. Turns out the whole time, police were looking at him. Turnquist was recently arrested on child porn charges after investigators searched his computer in connection with their investigation. That case is ongoing. It should be noted, Turnquist has passed two lie detector tests. There's no obvious physical evidence linking him to the crime scene. His immediate family has stuck by him, calling into question the focus on him as a suspect. But some extended family members, including Niswender's grandmother, believes Turnquist is hiding something. Here are the highlights of that newly released affidavit. FBI analysts determined the killer was known to the victim. Seminal fluid found on the body point to a man with a vasectomy. That grandmother told police Turnquist had a vasectomy. Niswender's best friend told police the victim secretly told her two years before her death Turnquist did inappropriate things to her as a child. Police also noted when Niswender was found dead, Turnquist's behavior was odd. He appeared unemotional and composed. Furthermore, we also learned a piece of overlooked crime scene evidence, a bath mat in Niswender's apartment, was retrieved by Niswender's family. That bath mat is now missing. Nonetheless, Turnquist told us last year he believes the killer must be wrestling with guilt. Inside them somewhere, they have to have some feeling of remorse. And... Uh, Sooner or later, it's going to get to them. It's going to eat them up enough that they're just not going to be able to handle it. In my interview with Turnquist, he said he treated his stepdaughter, Julia, as if she was his own. Family and friends of the victim painted a very different picture in interviews with police. Again, Turnquist and his wife and remaining stepdaughter deny his involvement in the murder and say police have it all wrong. I reached out to Turnquist's attorney today for comment on these new details and have not heard back. Jonathan Carlson. Seven Action News. All right. Thank you much, Jonathan.